this week we're going to be starting off with the hundredth lead code problem same tree now this is an easy level lead coding problem and it is going to help us understand a little bit about binary search trees in future videos i plan to tackle questions that are of medium difficulty but i wanted to get started off with something nice and simple let's dive right in by reading the problem statement Given two binary trees, write a function to check if they are the same or not. Two binary trees are considered to be the same if they are structurally identical and the nodes have the same value. So let's take a look at the first example. Here we have a binary tree that is 1, 2, and 3. And here we have another one that's 1, 2, and 3. So clearly they look the same. The root node, which is 1, has a left child, which is 2, in both cases, and at the same time, it also has a right child, which is 3, in both cases. Now let's take a look at another example. Here we have a binary tree, and we can see that one's left child is 2, but one's right child is null. And here we have one's left child is null, and one's right child is two. So in this case, these two binary trees are not the same. So we would output false. And let's do one final example where we have one as the root in both of these trees. One's left child is two, whereas the second tree's left child is one. So immediately we know that we have an error. So we can output false. So when solving this problem, we must first consider the base cases. So suppose we're given two trees, P and Q. Suppose they're both none. So if both P and Q are none, then we know that we can easily just return true. So if P is none and Q is none, we can just return true because we know that they are the same tree. Now suppose that P has a value and Q does not have a value. In this case, we know that this is not the same tree, right? We wanna just think about the most basic base cases because when we have a recursive function that is gonna help us solve this problem, we're going to wanna reduce that complexity of the recursion as much as possible. So the first base case is obviously, if both are none, we just return true. Now, if P is none and Q is not none, we can easily return false. Now, suppose it's the other way around. Now, in this case, Q has a value and P does not have a value. Of course, again, we're going to return false. And then the last thing that we need to consider is if P has a value and Q has a value, but if they're not equal, then we again return false. So if P's value is not equal to Q's value, then again, we simply return false. So obviously, these base cases only cover the initial node right? So for example, if we have a tree that is one, two, three, and one, two, three, like this, the only thing we're going to get from this base case, for example, if we just return here, is we're just going to check the first node. And that's not what we want to do. We want to recursively call this function on the subtrees or of these two main trees of P and Q so that even if these values are infinitely nested, we will have the right solution. So the important thing to consider is actually this recursive call. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, and let's just suppose that they keep going like that. So we have these two trees, P and Q. So we already have our three main base cases and these base cases are just there to keep us in check if any of the current value wherever the subtree is whether it is in one or it is in two or three or some you know section down here these base cases only check for that specific node but now we have to call recursively so what we're going to say is 
if the values pass the first base case, the second base case, and the third base case, then we need to call this function on the left subtree of both q and p. So we can call this sub function on the left subtree, and we don't want to forget about the right subtree, so we're going to call it also on the right subtree. And we're going to pass in, oops, I forgot to say p's left, p's right, q's right subtree. And because we have already declared our base cases, this value, which is right, and I'm, I'm going to call this left, these two values are going to contain return statement if any of these are false or true, of course. The last thing we want to do is return left and right. So if this is a little bit unclear, I do walk through the code in the end. So feel free to jump to that section if the reason I am calling these sub functions and have these base cases is a little bit unclear. Now let's jump into the big O time complexity. The time complexity here is pretty straightforward. We know that we have to just traverse the entire two subtrees. And to traverse them, if there's n nodes in each, or n nodes in one and m nodes in the other, we just have a simple time complexity of n plus m. Now that we understand the algorithm and the big O time complexity, let's take a look at the code. So here, we're given the function is same tree that we need to fill out. We are given the root node of the left tree and the right tree. And of course, if both of them are none, then we can return true. Because if both of the trees are not pointing to anything, then it's obviously true that they are equivalent. They are the same tree. Let's suppose that P or the left tree is none, but Q is not none. In this case, we want to return false because obviously if there's if there's one tree with a value and another tree without a value then it's not the same tree and same goes here if q is none while p is not none then we can return false now comes the main check the main check that we need to perform supposing that they do have values is to check if they are equal or not so if p's value is not equal to q's value then we can return false. And now we can jump into the recursive calls. So here what we're going to say is that we're going to check if the left tree inside of P and the left tree inside of Q are both the same by recursively calling the isSameTree function. And then we're also going to be doing the same for the right side of this tree, of both trees, sorry. So we're going to be passing in the right subtree of the left tree and the right subtree of the right tree. And that is going to recursively ensure that these two values only return true if both of the subtrees are the same. And at the end, all we need to do is make sure that both the left subtree and of course the right subtree of P and Q have to be equal as well. And there you have it. That is pretty much the code. And let's just submit for a sanity check. And as always, we are going to have a solution that comes in that is a lot slower than the fastest solution that I get. So the fastest one I got was in 12 milliseconds. I think that was faster than 93% of all Python submissions. I don't know why it's so random, even though I think this code does run inside of the lead code servers. Anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more in the future.